I'd like now to move to uh, Christine. Christine, uh, with CarbFix, you're downstream in the value chain compared to uh, carbon capture. So what is CarbFix about? So uh, thank you for inviting me over here. Uh, so CarbFix, what we uh, do, we are simply imitating Mother Nature's way of storing uh, CO2. So with that in mind, our mission is to significantly contribute in the climate recovery by continuously innovating and by ways of, of, of improving how we can actually store CO2 by mineralization. How we do that, uh, I'm drinking here uh, Pellegrino sparkling water. So what we do, we simply dissolve CO2 uh, just like this and we inject it into the ground where it starts to mineralize into the bedrock itself. So we are not injecting gases, we are injecting sparkling water that has uh, the ability, Mother Nature's ability to mineralize into the bedrock. So if you move to the next slide, please, just as a simple uh, chemical components in the bedrock itself. In our case, we need three ingredients. First, we need CO2. The second, we need basaltic rock. And the third, um, we need water. What we do here, we dissolve the CO2 into the actual, uh, dissolve the CO2 in water, and then we gently inject it into the bedrock. Once it reaches the bedrock at a very, very low depth, somewhere around on average 500 meters, it starts to mineralize. So the cationic ions in the bedrock itself, they get released and the mineralization process takes place. The easiest way to ex explain it is that uh, the water is the means of transport. So we, we can say that the water is the train and the CO2 is the passenger. And once the train reaches the bedrock, the CO2 jumps off the train and the water carries on. So we are borrowing the water for a few, few minutes, but the mineralization, this happens in less than two years instead of what usually happens in millions of years. And this is a permanent solution. That's impressive. So first of all, congratulations. In, in the previous slide, we've seen that uh, CapFix has made the cover page of National Geographic recent Thank issue. You. This is great. Thank you. And um, also recently you've signed um, uh, an important contract uh, with the European Union uh, to, to sequestrate carbon uh, in Iceland. Does it mean that CarbFix can only operate uh, in Iceland? No, uh, Iceland is a, we are an Icelandic company. So obviously we have been uh, piloting this and demonstrating this for quite some time. So originally uh, CarbFix was, was uh, a research project between three universities, US, Columbia University in New York, Iceland, University of Iceland, and CNRS of the Toulouse in France, uh, with the, uh, the, the ambition of replicating Mother Nature's way. This is based upon basalt. Basalt is not uh, only limited to Iceland. It covers approximately 5% of all land on Earth, but approximately 70%, 70% of the ocean floor. So it definitely is not limited to Iceland, but Iceland is uh, the origin of the, of the research project and the company. So we are now uh, exploring uh, the globe, as we can say. Okay, what worldwide ambition then, wonderful. Well, well we have a, it's not a problem that's limited to, to UAE, US, Japan or Iceland. It's a global problem. So we have to Absolutely. address it like that. Absolutely. So, uh, carbon uh, capture, sequestration, you are so-called in the value chain project developers. Let's so, Christine, um, it looks to me that uh, the, the cap fix solution of carbon sequestration into soil is, is pretty uh, universal, right? You're talking about uh, uh, that there is a, a large component of oceans where we can uh, apply this solution as an example. So, um, uh, can it be used also at a point source solution? And uh, uh, how is it's, uh, your solution is also, in my view, eligible to uh, both compliance markets and voluntary carbon markets? So, a dual source of financing. So, what will it take? to enforce wide adoption of, the, of your solution in particular? <coughs> yeah, very good question. Um, 
I don't have the silver bullet, but <laughs> I mean the, the magic answer here. But uh, in regards to how we are approaching things, yes, uh, this solution that we are offering, we're not saying it is a silver bullet, but as was mentioned before by Annette, we need all the solutions. This solution can be applied on the voluntary market, yes, and it can also be applied on the mandatory market. Uh, if you look at uh, my closest uh, samples, uh, as examples are European market. You have a, a trading scheme, ETS, where you have the government that has the stick on the companies. If you don't do this, you have to pay a certain tax or pay a certain fine. However, in the US, you're looking at the carrot, where if you do this, you will be incentivized. So it doesn't really matter which method it is, and it will most likely be a combination of both. You mentioned before, yes, we have uh, had the privilege of, you know, uh, let's say, starting this research in 2006. We incorporated the company three and a half years ago with the ambition to scale up and commercialize. Mm -hmm. We did receive a huge grant from the European Commission uh, earlier last year, uh, about 115 million euros, mm -hmm. to build the world's largest mineral storage site, which will be done in Iceland. So it is a combination of uh, subsidizing or, or grants, but at the same time, uh, the, the uniqueness of, of, of the coffee's technology, it is already economical. Just the, if you look at the entire value chain that we have two commercial operations in Iceland, uh, the capturing, the transport, and the actual mineralization, or the storage by mineralization, is less than $25 per ton. That's a very, very low mm -hmm. number. But at the same time, it's a totally different aspect than, than, than others have. We need all the technologies. Uh, this is one of them. And our main objective is now to scale up on a global basis uh, and, 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 let's say, uh, be available because we don't have time. Definitely, we don't have time.